So people often ask me where I get leopard geckos or where they should get a leopard gecko. Since some people don't want to support breeders, some people don't want to support pet stores, some people want to rescue. So I thought I'd go over the various ways that you can get a leopard gecko and you can apply this to a lot of different pets or reptiles in general. So I just wanted to say leopard gecko because I have the most of those. You could also apply this to other pets and other reptiles. So for this video, I Tormund might join us for a little bit because she is awake so I figured why not Jackson get out of Tormund's house, that's not nice. You were not invited. Come here. So I have with me here Tormund, who is a leopard gecko that I got from a breeder, but I got as an adoptable or pet only due to having an neurological disorder, as well as like one tiny eye and one big eye. So first and foremost, I would say absolutely do not get a leopard gecko from a pet store. These geckos can be sickly. These geckos come from mass breeders, so you're supporting them when you support the pet store. And really, it's just like not a good place to get them from. They're not handled. You don't know anything about their genetics. You don't know anything about their parents. Just really not the best route to go. I would also say don't get one from a mass breeder. And a mass breeder is a person who has like a lot of animals they're breeding. So you could say in the hundreds or in the thousands of animals that are being kept and bred by this individual. And a lot of times those mass breeders can be really just unethical or in it for the money. They could just be producing geckos and other animals in mass for the purpose of selling them, uh, but not for the purpose of giving you like an actual experience of finding out the genetics and the parents of your gecko. And at the end of the day, it really does come down to like what you feel comfortable supporting. And I personally don't feel comfortable supporting mass breeders. I think that they put quantity over quality when it comes to the care of their animals, when it comes to the health of their animals, and when it comes to the genetics of their animals. And so I really wouldn't support a mass breeder. I would also not support any breeder who breeds enigmas or lemon frosts. Those two morphs in particular for leopard geckos are not good to breed. And Enigmas are bred everywhere. They're bred in the United States, they're bred in Europe, they're bred in Asian countries. They're bred everywhere. But lemon frosts are not as commonly bred in the US as they are in Asian countries as far as that's my understanding. Apparently in Asian countries or in Europe you can get them very easily. I have heard this from other people. I don't know obviously because I live in the United States. But regardless, if you intend to buy from a breeder, check out the different morphs that they offer and if they offer enigma or lemon frost you should not support that person because they are putting their ethics and morals aside to make money off of geckos that will potentially and most likely be really sickly or just will have a poor quality of life due to having um, enigma syndrome or lemon frost they have um cancerous tumors so you really don't want to support either of those. In summation for where you shouldn't get them, I wouldn't get them from a mass breeder, an unethical breeder who breeds lemon frost or enigmas for example, and I wouldn't get them from the pet store. Now where can you get them? You can get them from Kijiji which is uh, in Canada or Craigslist which is in the United States. You have to be careful with Kijiji and Craigslist both because one, there's always the risk of like if you meet up with someone that they could like hurt you or kidnap you or whatever. Of course that's a very small amount of the time but it is definitely a risk so it's something you should consider. I have personally used Craigslist like a bazillion times and I've never had a problem so I can't say that it's happened to me but it's definitely something to be aware of. Always have someone go with you, meet in a public place, that sort of thing. Another reason you have to be careful of Kijiji or Craigslist or like those Facebook marketplace posts is because they can sell you a gecko that's sick, they can say that the gecko is healthy and then when you get there and actually see it, it's not. That has happened to me um, multiple times. At the end of the day, you have to be careful about Craigslist. You can end up with like the most perfectly healthy, wonderful, well cared for animal in the world. You could also end up with the opposite of that situation. So you really have to know exactly what you could be getting yourself into. Make sure that you like vet the person, like ask them uh, all about the animal. Ask the person a ton of information. Ask them for current photos, ask them for photos of the enclosure, ask them where they got the gecko, how old it is, all that kind of stuff. Try and learn as much as you can because you want to know as much as you can about your gecko before you get it, or any animal for that matter. Other than that, it can be a really great place to rescue if that's something you're interested in. Uh, just keep in mind that any gecko that you get off Craigslist that you are intending to rescue as in you know that it has chirp chirp, huh? that you know that it has health problems, things like that, then you're definitely gonna wanna be 100% sure that you have a vet and that you have the funds um, capable of 
getting vet treatment for the animal. A lot of times you can just rescue an underweight gecko or a gecko that's been living on sand and there will be health problems associated due to like impaction or due to not having been supplemented properly and having MBD or being super malnourished and underweight due to being improperly fed. Those are all things that you need to consider if you're rescuing one. I think rescuing is a great, superb effort. I think that tons of people should do it, but you have to know what you're getting yourself into before doing it. And I've rescued a few times, but I don't rescue anymore because at this point I can't jeopardize the health of all the other animals that I currently have with a situation where an animal might be carrying something. Even with quarantine, I, I want to be 100% safe and I can't risk the health of the ones I currently have. Which is why someday it would be my dream to have like an actual space where I can rescue animals and it wouldn't somehow negatively impact the animals that I have at my house. But that's a long ways away. Your absolute best bet in terms of getting a leopard gecko or another type of reptile or animal is to find a small hobbyist breeder. A lot of times you can find small hobbyist breeders on Instagram or on Facebook or by like talking to people in the community who already have certain reptiles. They can tell you where they got theirs and small hobbyist breeders will be marked by not having a lot of animals. They'll know a lot about the baby like if you ask them like if you're getting a baby leopard gecko for example. You can ask about its temperament, you can ask about its parents, you can ask about its likes, its dislikes. Someone who is a hobbyist breeder will know that gecko and so they'll be able to tell you all about it. Sometimes like if you go to like an expo, there are small hobbyist breeders but most expos are mass breeders and so you really have to be careful if you go to an expo of who you support monetarily. A lot of times those geckos are plenty healthy at expos but if you don't want to support someone who breeds Enigma or Lemon Frost or, you know, is a mass breeder, then you really have to be careful. A lot of expos that are like smaller expos that are like local to a city or something, sometimes they'll have like small or hobbyist breeders. But events like NARBC, they will definitely have mass breeder after mass breeder. And that's where I really became aware of it, honestly. It's super sad, but again, that's something that I'm against. Not everybody is against that. Some people think that it's fine to mass breed reptiles and they've been doing it for a long time people support them whatever that's just my personal feeling about it and people ask me all the time how i rescue how i adopt how i get my leopard geckos and it really does come down to i don't support mass breeders i don't support breeders who breed enigmas or lemon frosts and at this point i pretty much only get geckos that have some sort of deformity or neurological disorder some sort of birth defect or something similar to that and their or their pet only quality meaning that like they have something wrong with them they can't be bred people reach out to me now at this point but before when i was first getting into rescuing and adopting leopard geckos with um conditions like enigma syndrome i would reach out to breeders mass breeders and hobbyists alike and say hey I have availability um, for a gecko that has enigma syndrome or a birth defect if you have one that you're considering rehoming to a pet only home instead of culling. Culling is killing it by the way. Sometimes breeders just off the offspring that doesn't look like it's gonna fare well. As sad as it is, that's just how it is. Sometimes there might not be enough homes or enough safe homes to pet out that, that gecko and also sometimes people can be afraid that if they were to give that pet only gecko to someone as a pet that they would breed it anyway like that happens with enigmas so it's really really sad but it's why i like to even with mass breeders who i don't monetarily support i'll be like listen i'm here to take in an enigma if you've got one like i want to be able to give that gecko a home so that it doesn't have to be put to sleep or cold like oh sad so nowadays i just get my geckos from breeders who know that i'm like a good special needs or pet only home for leopard geckos but if you're just you know looking to start out by rescuing or looking to start out by getting special needs reach out to breeders on instagram or facebook and ask them hey i'm really interested in keeping pet only whether it be pet only due to just not having known genetics or pet only due to having a birth defect from incubation fluctuation or from genetics and start from there i mean really for me it just started with rescuing geckos off of craigslist and then after that i moved into getting enigmas from breeders that i met on instagram and then from there it's just turned into this whole big family where people reach out to me and ask me to take enigmas i would say pretty regularly especially in like the spring and summer months because that's when like a lot of babies are born with enigma or a lot of breeders start showing signs of enigma syndrome really is probably just worsening and the signs were always there but that's another topic and then at that point they say you know I, I need to find a pet only home for this gecko 
and of course I'm ready and willing to take it. But yeah, that's how I get my geckos and most of my reptiles at this point in time. I don't typically support breeders, and if I do support a breeder, it's a hobbyist, it's not a mass breeder. And again, this is just how I do it. No one else has to do it this way. Pet only special needs geckos are not for everyone, and if you are interested in getting a 100% healthy gecko, you can still do that by supporting a hobbyist breeder monetarily. Just make sure you're asking questions, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, at the end of the day, these animals are a product that a breeder is selling. Unfortunately, it does come down to that. So you have the right, as a person who is buying the animal, to ask, you know, what are the parents? How old is it? Um, you know, what's its behaviors like? And things like that. You have a right to ask for, you know, seeing its enclosure. You have a right for all those questions. So if you feel like you want to know the most before getting your animal, which is the best way to do it, then don't be afraid to ask questions to the breeders or to the pet owners on Craigslist or anything like that. Ask plenty of questions and get to know your gecko before you get them. Right, Tormund? <laughs> but that's all for this video, you guys. I hope that you found this helpful and insightful. And also, I hope that no one, like, comes at me all judgmentally because I... Wow. Chirpy, chirpy. I noticed that, I don't know what it is about tangerines, but they're very talkative. Like, and not in a negative way. Like, they're just a little talkative. Like, Tormund and Bran are, like, not mean geckos, but they do talk a bit. Like, when I'm holding them and they're, like, squeezing them between my fingers. They chirp. They chirp. You can see the little light on that side now. But anyways, I hope I don't get any flack from anyone. I mean, it's pretty obvious at this point in my life and my channel that I should not like mass breeders, that I should not like unethical breeders. So if you just feel differently, that's completely fine. And I have no problem with that. And there's no judgments on my end at all. I just wanted to share exactly what I do, how I do it for the people that have asked me where I get my geckos. I get asked that a lot. Please hit the subscribe button, the like button, hit the notification bell, check the links below. Recently I started doing this thing on my channel where I show my patrons on Patreon at the end of each video. So if you're interested in that, as well as getting access to early content, early videos, behind the scenes stuff, seeing an animal before I, you know, show it to the rest of uh, Instagram and social media, then go ahead and become a patron. I really, really thank you if you do. But that's all for this time from me and Tormund, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.